Now, as someone who likes building extremely overcomplicated devices in Besiege, one project that's been on my mind for a while now is building a fully mechanical computer. My main goal here is to make some sort of nice display that I can control entirely without using any of the built-in logic gates. So starting out in the sandbox here, the first thing I needed to do was create a way to store a single bit of memory. The thing that came to mind right away was making some sort of rotation-based system where one position would be considered zero and the other would be considered one. So you can see I built up this rotating log here and I tried using a couple of sticks to make which position was which a little clearer, but it was still really hard to read. So I ended up using these armor plates and making custom textures for them that have each of the logic states on them. And you can see here that by rotating this around, I'm able to switch from a zero to a one. And I ended up simplifying the design a little bit here. And this is what I wanted to try to use to build the rest of my computer. The the first major module of this that I needed to make was going to be the binary adder, and in order to do that, there's four different logic gates that is going to need to make. Now the simplest one of these is going to be the inverter, and that's what I wanted to start with here. But before I get into making that, big thanks to War Robots Frontiers for sponsoring today's video. Now if you're into giant mech battles, and honestly who isn't, you have to check out War Robots Frontiers. It's a brand new game, totally rebuilt for PCs and consoles using Unreal Engine 5. You're building and customizing your own war robots, teaming up with friends, and diving into 6v6 tactics battles where every move actually feels weighty and real. Now you can also build the perfect machine for your playstyle, whether you want to charge in as a heavy assault mech, outflank enemies as a speedy scout, or defend key points like I usually like to do. And as of just a few days ago, the new Smuggler's Run Battle Pass is live. You can unlock 35 plus rewards, including the new Scorpion War Robot, which looks pretty fancy. Best of all, it's totally free to play on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, and Xbox one. So if you're interested, hit the link in the description, squad up, and start building your ultimate war robot today. So thanks again to War Robots Frontiers for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to building that inverter. Now the way that the inverter works is that it takes whatever the current input is and outputs the opposite of that. And with my current setup here, it's actually pretty easy to make an inverter. Now you can see that I doubled up my swivel joints here, and I'm putting down some wheels behind them. Now I ended up getting rid of the stuff on front of it just temporarily and you can see that I'm attaching these wheels together with some four bar linkages. Now this linkage copies the rotation of one wheel onto the other wheel, so you can see that as I spin one, the other spins at the same rate. Now by putting down some armor plates on these wheels and giving them opposite states, I was hoping this would already give us an inverter. Now unfortunately though, I put them a little too close together and the armor plates couldn't totally rotate around, so after separating them out a little bit, I tried it again and this did seem to be working. One thing I realized though is that the four bar linkage is actually unnecessary here, and a much easier way to go is using some gears instead. Now the thing with the gears is it will rotate the wheels in opposite directions now, but because of the way we've defined our logic states, it actually doesn't matter which direction they rotate in. Now next up though, I didn't really like that the wheels could just spin in any orientation they wanted, and I wanted them to either lock in a zero or in a one position. Now to do that, you can see I put down a couple of springs, and I put down a couple of swivel joints to link these up to the wheel. And as the wheel rotates around, Around, you can see that now it either gets locked straight down or straight up, and this is just going to help with the overall stability of the system. But now with one of our logic gates done, I wanted to try making another, and I decided to start with this exclusive OR gate. Now by bringing up the truth table for this gate, basically the way that it works is that there's going to be two inputs and one output. If one of the inputs is a 1, the output is also going to be a 1. But if both or if neither of the inputs is a 1, then the output will be a zero. Now by looking at this truth table, there is a certain symmetry to it, and I thought that I might be able to make a differential work here to get the result that I want. So I started building up that differential here, and you can see that it's basically just three gears that are all connected together like this. Now once I had this, you can see me attaching up a couple of gears over to the inputs here, and by rotating them around, I'm able to rotate the gear on the outside. Now an interesting thing that I noticed is that when only one of the inputs is a one, the output gear will either be pointing straight up or straight down. When both or when neither of them are on, it's either going to be pointing forward or backward. Now 
this was a difference, but I had to be able to exploit it in order for it to be useful. So what I decided to do here was add in another gear, and what I wanted to try doing was adding in a smaller gear to multiply that displacement. Now I had an idea for how this could be useful, but trying it out here, I noticed it was jamming up now, and it seemed like that big gear on the outside was running into the small gear that I added. Now by rotating it up a little bit, I was able to get it just out of the way at that big gear, but it was still kind of hard to see if it was working. So what I did next was add in a gear over to the right, and I'm using a brace to link it up to that center gear. Now this just lets me get everything out of that crammed area there, and once I did that, you can see me once again adding in some small gears off of that large gear. Now after that, I added in a wheel and another one of my little spring mechanisms, and trying this out, it seemed to pretty much be working right away. Now again, the idea is that if one of the inputs is on, the big gear is either going to be pointing straight up or straight down. Now by adding in those small gears to multiply that rotation, that means that instead of being 90 degrees displaced, it's now going to be 180 degrees displaced. Now that means that it's going to flip around the output, which is going to end up making it change its state. So that one was a little complicated, but the next thing I wanted to work on was going to be the AND gate. Now looking at the truth table for this one, you can see here that the output is going to be on only when both of the inputs are on. Now unfortunately, this was going to require an entirely different design, and you can see me starting out with a couple of those inputs, and what I'm doing here is making a system that goes in between these. Now this is pretty similar to a system I've actually built before for my Polybridge computer, but I'm modifying it a little bit to work better in 3D. Now in Polybridge, you can see here that if I expand one of the hydraulics, it ends up pushing this joint down instead of out. It's only when both of the hydraulics expand that it pushes the center node forward, which allows the output to be a 1. Now back in Besiege here, you can see I'm making a similar design, but I have to use a lot of hinges and swivel joints, which are a little bit less elegant. Now, I also had to rotate this entire thing up here to keep it from falling apart, and giving it a shot, it's definitely not working so well in 3D. It's kind of rotating around a lot here, and you can see it took a lot of reinforcement to get this thing to stay somewhat rigid. It did sort of seem to work here, and with a few modifications to get it to run a little bit smoother, I wasn't unhappy with the results here. Now one thing though is I did want this to have a nice rotating output here, so once I moved another wheel to the back, I decided to shrink everything down a little bit more to get this to run as smooth as possible. And trying it out here, you can see that when I rotate only one of the wheels, the output still stays mostly at zero. Now it's only when I rotate both of them that you can see it snaps over to the one, and this is exactly what we were looking for. Now going back to Polybridge here, the convenient thing about this design is that just by flipping around the direction of these two pieces, I was able to change this from an AND gate to an OR gate. Now this works because you can see now that as either one of these hydraulics expands, it immediately starts pushing this node forward, and if the other one expands as well, it doesn't really change how much it moves. Now this means in Besiege that just by flipping around the direction of these few hinges, I was able to get this to change into an OR gate, and that means that we have all of the major gates that we need to make. Now they were a little bit messy though, so I spent a lot of time tuning these and getting them to be as simple as possible before I made the full adder circuit. Now I've shown the circuit in a few of my other videos before, so I don't want to get too much into it, but in order for this to work, I'm going to have three inputs and I'm going to have two outputs. Now these A and B inputs up here are the actual bits that are getting added together, and you see that these need to run both into an XOR gate and into an AND gate. So to do that, I added a couple of pistons here, and you can see that I'm using some hinges to push forward some of these logs. Now the idea the idea was that I could link these together and create a long bar that pushes forward when the piston does as well. Now I could connect this into both of my logic gates, and with this I should be able to use one piston for both of those inputs. Now trying this out though, I noticed it was a little bit weak, and I could see that the bar was bending, which it really wasn't supposed to do. So I decided instead to make some wheels here and build up some 4 bar linkages to transfer that rotation up. Now once I did this, it's pretty easy to link everything together together here, and you can see me trying it out now. And overall, it seemed to be working fine, but an issue that I noticed is that the AND gate wasn't quite snapping the way that I wanted. Now if you remember from before, turning on one of the inputs slightly rotates down the wheel, and the issue with this is if I run it into another logic gate, it's gonna cause some weird behavior since I'm not nicely snapped to a 0 or to a 1. And looking over here at the direct output of the gate, you can kind of see why that happens. Turning on only 
only one of the inputs slightly pushes forward that node, and unfortunately that's just not really going to work for me. So I needed a way to get rid of that slight bit of pushing, and in order to do that, I thought about using a couple of suspension pieces. Now the idea here is that I could push one into the other slightly, and this kind of takes away that slight bit of movement it has, but when I push both of them forward, it'll still be able to push the entire wheel to a 1. And by using a winch as well to pull back the entire thing at the right time, I'll be able to both push this forward and pull it back like before, while also absorbing that slight bit of movement when only one of the inputs is on. Now this is a big help here, and you can see trying this out now, it's working really well. When both of the inputs go on, it snaps that AND gate into position, but as soon as one of them goes off, it snaps it right back to a 0. So with this working, I have the first stage of my adder done, and now I just have three more gates to add in. Now the good news is that it's actually pretty easy from this point, and I just have to add in another exclusive OR gate on the output of the first one. And you can see with one of the inputs hooked up here, it seems to be working fine, but now I have to add in this other input, which is going to be the carry in. Now this input comes from the output of the previous stage, and this is what lets you add numbers together that are larger than 0 and 1. With this added in though, it still seemed to be working really really well here, and one thing I was surprised by was how fast it was getting the output. So with that, now I had to add in one more AND gate, and this one's gonna go between that carry in bit and the output of the first exclusive OR. So I got all that linked up here, and you can see even this still seemed to be working pretty well. Now I could definitely tell it was struggling a little bit under this load, but I just had one more gate to add in, and I was hoping this would all work. Now for this last gate, I have to add in an OR gate, between the outputs of my two AND gates, and one issue that I saw is that the inputs for this gate are coming through a bunch of other gates. This was probably going to make them pretty weak here, but you can see that I tried connecting this up anyway, and given it a shot now, I could tell there were some problems. Now you can see I have to manually kind of rotate some of these wheels around in order to get them to go in the right direction here, and while it's computing properly, it's just not quite powerful enough to make this work. Now I kind of saw that coming, and I realized an easy way to go is instead of using 4 of our linkages, I can add in some of these rotating joints, and by using some variables here, I can transfer the rotation wirelessly. Now the real disadvantage of this is just that it's a little bit slower than directly connecting the gates together, but you can see here that by rotating it around, I'm able to turn on the sensor, and it's able to automatically rotate that joint forward. So with all that in place, it was looking pretty good, and I got that implemented for the other AND gate as well. And finally, Finally here, I was cycling through all the inputs, and I wasn't really seeing any issues. So with that single unit done, the real beauty of this is that I can keep copying it up for every bit that I want to add. So I added four of these in to start, and you can see me trying this out now. Now on the left, you can see the calculation that I'm currently performing, and while it takes a second to arrive at the right answer, it does end up getting there, which is really all that I care about. So with the adder looking good, the next thing I wanted to work on was going to be the RAM. Now to build this, it's actually pretty similar to what I already have. Now by putting a few of these in line, I'm able to store a larger number here, and the only real challenge I have now is making a way to store the data on the bus only when I want to. So to build that, I added in some pistons above what I already have, and you can see me connecting up the wheels on the bottom to the wheels on top using springs. Now the idea with these springs is that when they're not being tensioned, it should allow the wheels to rotate independently, but when I tension them, it'll force the bottom wheel to copy what's on top. Now this of course is useful for storing data when I want to, and I decided while I was at it to change this from a 4-bit system to be a 6-bit system. Now this lets me deal with numbers up to 64 instead of numbers up to 16. Now I wanted this extra precision because the next thing I was going to try to make was the full display. Now for this, I was thinking of making some sort of flip display system, and you can see here I'm using a couple of armor plates painted different colors to represent the different states. Now this should let me show either a black or a white dot, but one issue I was having was that these plates have a large hitbox and I can't get them very close together. So instead of that, I decided to use these surface blocks, and with these I can turn off their collision so they can actually run right into each other. Now I do need a little bit of clearance between them in order for them to not latch onto each other, but it was still way better than what I had before. But the next thing I wanted to do was come up with a way to 
automatically flip around the display. So I thought about using a spring for this and trying this out, it does seem to work. I'm able to pull this back into position, but an idea I had here was to chain two springs together. The goal was basically to create a simple AND gate using these springs so that only when both of them are pulling will it actually flip around the display. Now, once I added a ballast into the middle here, you can see that this is working and that only when both of them are pulling is there actually tension on the system that pulls back the display. Now, the reason that I need two springs is that every single pixel is going to be controlled by a row and a column position. By making one of the springs the row spring and one of them the column spring, I'll be able to address each individual pixel and have it flip the way that I want. So once I had all that in place, you can see me copying over eight of these displays. And with that, now I wanted to start working on the decoder logic. Now you can see me putting down a lot of pistons here and all of this is pretty much just going to be a lot of individual AND gates, and each one of them is going to be checking for if their specific column is being selected. So after adding in some sensors to check if that condition is true, this should be all I need to control the columns of this display, and with the column selector done, now we just have to copy this over to build up the row selector, which is pretty much exactly the same thing. Now this also lets me copy up some more displays here, and you can see me going for a 4x8 design. So with that looking good, now for a more comprehensive test, I wanted to try adding in some more controls over towards the display and kind of show you what's going on. Now looking at the six bits of input here, this is the way that I ended up breaking it up in order to address the display. The bottom bit ends up controlling whether I want a white or a black tile to appear. The next three bits control which column I want to select, and the top two bits are controlling which row. So what I can do here is dial in the exact tile that I want and then by selecting a certain key to activate the display, it executes that command and updates the display. Now sure enough here, this did all seem to be working. So now with the display looking good, now I just need to add in something that I can actually write a program with. Now the whole time I've been working on this, I've been collecting a bunch of random control signals and all of these signals together, I'm putting into a bunch of sensors and these are gonna be looking at some blocks in front of them to figure out exactly when they should be doing each of these actions. So to build my program, I'm using a bunch of ballasts, and by putting these in very specific patterns, I can control each of these modules on the computer, and this should let me get some results. And by attaching these up on some winches here, I can slowly lower these in front of my sensors, and this is going to let me control everything that I want in a very specific order. Now you'll notice this first program I wrote is a very simple repeating pattern, and what this does is keeps adding a 1 to the current value value on the bus, and then outputs it to the display. So with this, I could see here that I already had one of the bits on the display set, and by moving through this program even more, I was able to add another number and also try outputting this to the display. And moving along here, it was looking pretty good, although I noticed the display set back this first bit to being a zero. That's not quite what I wanted, and I realized there's actually a slight bug in what I wrote, and I was writing to the display a little too early, which caused it to load in some bad data. So I was able to repeat the program here and you can see I was able to fix that problem and now as I move more through the program I'm able to set the second bit on the display and with that simple proof of concept done the only real functionality that I realized I wanted was some sort of system to allow me to loop through the same bit of code over and over. So to do that I copied a single bit of memory here and by adding in some springs and a new sensor to check when I want to enter into a jump you can see that I'm able to set that bit of memory, and that starts a very slow timer that's going to pull back up the code with the winches, but it's also going to move these two pistons very slowly, and when they go in front of the sensor on the bottom, it's going to reset the whole system and allow the code to start executing again. So with all that functionality in place, what I wanted to try doing was writing a program to set every bit on the display to be black. Now, it took me a little while to figure out exactly how I wanted to move the data around here, but once I figured out what I wanted, I started putting down some bad to write out that whole program. Now after that, I have to space these out very particularly in order to make sure there's enough time in between each instruction to reset everything in the computer. Finally with that, just had to brace everything together here and started moving the computer to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So with that done, you can see me executing that first program here, and you can see that it ends up entering this loop at the top where it keeps moving back and forth on the same bit of code. So seeing that, I was pretty much satisfied and just 
I need to just write one more program here that also uses a conditional jump. And you can see with this, I'm able to do some complicated stuff with that display. Now again, make sure to check out the link in the description to try out War Robots Frontiers. And while you're down there, feel free to let me know what else you want to see me try. But otherwise, till next time.